gives me great pleasure to present on the cool London Calling platform the Avesta Genome Project International, the, a precision medicine company and also our recent research outcomes on the subject of epigenetics and human disease and the impact of such a dynamic methylome on variants in aging in the context of personalized genomics. Avesta Genome Project is a translational precision genomics company where we combine diagnostics with prescriptions, prescribed drugs, and uh, in the mode of drug discovery. And we have a, based on a unique cohort platform of the Zoroastrian Parsis of India, uh, which can investigate and discover novel cures and diagnostics for multi-diseases. A bit on the Avesta Genome Project, it's a study of the endogamous Parsi community leading to precision medicine and nutrigenomics with focus on cancers, neurodegenerative conditions, and rare diseases. The Avesta Genome Project is perhaps the world's first detailed systems biology study of the Zoroastrian Parsis, a well-defined small population of less than 50,000 individuals in India. They, with well-documented genealogical charts, demonstrated an unbroken lineage for the last 30 years. This community arrived in India 1,300 years ago from Iran, the ancient Persia, and uh, through generations of marriage within the community, as the community, the, one of the special traits was that the community had to marry within these were the rules of the community, which has resulted in an increased ev evidence of traits for greater longevity and also certain diseases like Parkinson's disease, stroke, heart disease, cancers, and Alzheimer's diseases. Avesta Genome Project has to date collected 4,600 blood samples across various platforms, right from genomics to stem cells. And now it's aiming to deliver the 10,000 collection and with a comprehensive biobank and database of this unique population. Also alongside comparative population subjects, which will be used to deliver precise qualified biomarker targets directed to defeating diseases worldwide. Besides the uniqueness of this community, which arrived from Iran, Persia into India 1300 years ago, the endogamous nature and the cultural and other practices, there's, they're, they're, they are grounded on the veneration of fire. The basis of the community uses fire as a medium for worshipping Ahura Mazda. And they, one of the other traits about it is that they frown upon smoking and because it pollutes the earth and uh, smokers are severely ostracized by the Parsi families and therefore restricted sm smoking is extremely restricted among the community members. So this, so just uh, this in the a bit of explanation on the fire and smoking is linked to our work on lung cancer which was recently funded by the Foundation for Smoke Free World. And based on that, so this is the current work which we are about to uh, present is, has, is an outcome, one of the many outcomes of that project. The uh, endogamy and prevalence of the endogamy in the community has resulted in increased predisposition to specific cancers and neurodegenerative disorders, as you can see, and high stroke, uh, higher in Parkinson's, higher prostate cancer, higher breast cancer, and also lung cancer. However, because of their practices in non-smoking, you see very low levels of lung cancer as compared to the Indian community at large. Uh, at this point, uh, given this background of the community, the project, I would like to hand over to Dr. Kashyap Kumarasamy, who has done a lot of the work on this project, to discuss the peer publication further and the science thereof. So thank you, Dr. Vilu, for the introduction. Um, so before we get into the research topic, I would like to just give a background on the epigenetic modifications, which are heritable in uh, dynamic changes that occur in the genome, 
which do not affect the DNA sequence. And there is an influence of environment, uh, including exercise, stress, and diet, which also affect the epigenetic modifications. So in this context, in order to identify aging-related epigenetic modifications, in a personalized genomics approach, we uh, assessed an individual over a span of 12 years. As you see, uh, HV2A1A being the same individual 12 years back and 1B being the recent one. And we did a methylome profiling of these two samples to identify signatures over 12 years. So the basic aim was to identify differences in methylation that contribute to aging and also identify genes that are part of these uh, methylation changes. We used the gridiron nanopore sequencer on the X5 platform, uh, which actually gives the methylated cytosines uh, and also helps us identify the methylation frequency uh, for each region. So basically, uh, the methylation frequency is the number of reads supporting methylation by the total number of reads for that region. So just as a process workflow, we had uh, two parts to our work. One was the identification of the methylation uh, signature, the methylation changes as seen on the left. And the right hand side is also to identify epigenome genome interactions, which needed us to do some variant calling, uh, SNP variant calling uh, on the same samples. So um, the methylation uh, calling was uh, furnished through the use of uh, guppy, pore chop, and nano polish, which gives us the methylation frequency. And uh, the base calls files give a li log likelihood score of each methylated read. And with this, we were able to understand what are the dynamic methylation changes. So as you see in the graph, uh, you can appreciate that the sample isolated recently accrued a far more uh, methylation uh, and uh, you know, more CPGL and methylation happened in the recent sample compared to the older sample, that is 1A. And this differences was distributed across uh, all chromosomes, exception of uh, 3, 12, 17, 19, and 22, as seen in the red, which requires a further understanding from our end. Uh, not only that, we were able to identify genomic architecture in the form of uh, you know, uh, tag sites, the TSS, gene promoters, genic, and non-coding regions and found the genic regions had the highest CPGL and methylation imprints and were followed by the other regions. So we found a total of 26,000 genes uh, between uh, differentially methylated between the recent sample and the old sample. And we had to prioritize because all the 26,000 genes, we used a system of prioritization to identify functionally relevant genes by using different data sets curated in-house. Uh, I mean, different data sets uh, for online, uh, which we curated in-house and also genes that are uh, the signatures of uh, smoking. About 44 genes were also taken into this analysis. So together, when we curate all of these things together, we identified a, a clutch of 5,258 genes of critical relevance for further analysis. Uh, we also, since uh, methylation is an, and it's not a symmetric process, there are regions of the strand which might be hypo and hypermethylated. We are able to segregate each uh, uh, methylation call for the region as hemi hyper, hypo, and uh, hypermethylated regions. And when we uh, uh, clustered, we were able to find a cluster of 103 genes that were significantly hypermethylated and 300 genes that were also hypomethylated. And the methylation was different among different protein families. Uh, you know, for example, as you see, oncogenes and the protein kinases were hy hypomethylated, whereas um, homeodomain genes seem to be more hypermethylated. So the next step was to identify epigenome genome interactions, which have a pathological, which have been documented have a pathological significance. And in this context, we actually called SNPs and try to identify their location within different uh, CPG islands or near the CPG islands. And we found out that uh, there were 242 variants that uh, occur in 177 differentially methylated genes. Um, uh, and uh, these variants were uh, further an analyzed and we uh, identified a cluster of 10 genes that were significantly methylated and have variants at the CPG region or within the plus or minus four base pair regions of the CPG window. Interestingly, we found two uh, interesting genes, caspate and PCGF3, uh, which were significantly hypomethylated and carried variants at the CPG sites. And the network analysis with a cluster of 1,000 genes also showed them to be implicated in pathways, implicated in cell to cell senescence and longevity regulating gene clusters. We not only, uh, we further on uh, went to identify mutation signatures based on the variant calls and try to identify uh, functionally relevant transitions and transversions. So we found a high prevalence of C2T transitions uh, for 
genes that are found in pathways of Alzheimer's and Parkinson's, whereas smoking associated genes had a decreased incidence of C2T transitions. So with this, we extended it to all the 99, 96 mutation signatures and found an interesting pattern of um, mutation signatures for Parkinson's and Alzheimer's and Huntington's disease pathways, whereas the pathways for smoking related changes did not have uh, changes in the mutation signatures. So taken together, uh, we found a cluster of 5,258 genes. Uh, we found a unique set of modifier variants with uh, you know these modified variants being clustered within CPG regions. And we found that C2D transitions uh, are accumulated specifically for Alzheimer's and Parkinson's disease pathway genes, but lesser contribution to smoking associated genes. So we ex intend to extend this study to larger cohorts, case control cohorts to identify epigenetic signatures of smoking and validation of significant genome epigenome interactions in in vitro assays. So with this, I'd like to thank uh, London Calling for the invitation extended to Dr. Villu and Avestigen Limited uh, to showcase our study. And uh, this project was funded by a grant to Dr. Villu uh, from the Foundation for Smoke Free World. And uh, we would be interested in seeking strategic partnerships, uh, starting even with uh, a nanopox for nanopore uh, for our future uh, research collaborations. And, and thank you for your time.